With the release of the simulation branch of Blender 3.5, Blender artists are going off the rails with some impressive and amazing simulation. It's only natural that after tackling procedural modeling and initial hair grooming, the next big target of Geometry Node is simulation. And this is what the folks at Blender Foundation are doing. Alongside the release of the simulation branch, they've also released a Geometry Node workshop blog detailing how the simulation process would look like. So at first, the simulation will be tied to the animation system besides support for sub steps. It will only be evaluated why the animation frame changes and it can be cached like existing physics simulation in Blender. Eventually, simulations will be able to run on their own clock and that physics slash real-time clock should also run independently from the animation clock, allowing users to set up and control simulations interactively. And I believe this will be very similar to what we have in Maya, where the Maya Live simulation runs totally independent of what you have within the timeline. The folks at Blender Foundation also plans the implementation of a local and global form of simulation, where local gets to deal with simple simulations and global deals with object interactions such as collision and rigid body. Although the global implementation is planned for the future, but this currently is a ray of sunshine to geometry node. With the present discussion for Sierra and Parallel Loop, which can be nested, the plan is to be able to give more control to artists just like with what they did with the present implementation of geometry nodes for procedural asset creation. Currently, users can only work with one continuous loop for generating meshes and offsetting objects and component position. The blog also shares a bit on the object geometries for simulation and a proper switch node implementation, with additional topics which were covered within the geometry node workshop simply listed. And with all this, we can only expect more cool stuff come to Blender in the future. And for those who are pretty excited about the simulation branch, how you can get started with this is super easy. And for those who like to explore with this, all you need to do is go over to blender.org, go over to download, go all the way down to where you find the experimental, click on download Blender Experimental, go to the branch. So this currently still exists within the branch since it hasn't been fully integrated into the master. So you need to download the Blender geometry node simulation. And once you have it, all you need to do is file Blender and you can start creating stuff. The very first thing which you need to do is switch over to your geometry nodes. And then we are just going to drag out this panel and switch this to timeline. The reason is because simulations deals with playback. So what we would do now is to simply click and drag and then type in the word simulation. Actually, before we do that, if you go over to add, you would notice that we have simulation. So the simulation has the input and output, and that is what we're going to be working with. So we'll type in the word simulation. If I click and drag all the way out and I type in the word simulation output, this creates a bubble. Now this bubble just simply tells you that you're doing your simulation within this space and the simulation that you'll be creating or whatever that you'll be simulating needs to exist from here to here. So it's taking all of the data, all of the things that you're making from this section, it's dragging it through the input, it is processing it, and this is also outputting it all the way to the geometry output. And how this works is relatively easy. So if, for example, you like to transform stuff, so I'm just going to type in the word transform, get the transform, connect this transform right here. Let's say we like to transform things towards the X axis. I'm just going to put about 0.2. If I press the playback button, you notice it just keeps transforming. And the same thing happens. I mean, lots of people will take advantage of this, especially if you're into motion graphics, you would definitely do a lot of things with this. So I can set this all the way to 0.7. Press the playback and you can see that if we increase it, we can get even faster playbacks and we can actually control this playback however we want. In terms of simulation, whatever that you put between here and here automatically gets simulated. So one of the examples that we have here, which I'm going to put on Gumroad, is this balloon looking setup. Now this is originally modeled from a creator, which I'm going to put a link in the description to, you know, his Twitter or potentially just put a link somewhere where you can check him out. What this does is super easy. Once you press the playback, this automatically starts making whatever object that you have swell. So you can do this with literally any object. Let's get Susan looking nice. Actually, let's subdivide Susan by one and I'm going to apply that. So once we have that applied, go back to that cube. Let's see if we can make Susan go all the way up. So we're just getting that object info. Let's grab Susan in there and we would set this all the way back. I think at this point we need to mute Suzanne. So you'd also notice something else that certain times your simulation doesn't work unless you just scribble back and forth within the timeline. So I'm just going to bounce this back. And if we press the playback button, you can now see Suzanne is getting bigger. And uh, for this particular setup, if you like to control the speed at which the scaling happens, you can control that here. So we can set this to 0.1. Actually, that was what it was. 
So 0.01 can set that. And if we press the playback button, you see it inverts. And uh, if we set this to 0.05, let's see, set that backwards and you can start seeing some stuff like that. So depending on what you like to control, you can use this particular setup to do that. Also have a very nice factor here which actually plays a huge role. So you can also use that to control how some of these things just simply operate and how they perform. So basically, most of the setup deals with the position node. And with the position node, you can set specific locations or alter the location or position of certain components that the geometry has. So the next one, which we're going to look at is a very simple look at what you can make. So I'm just going to get rid of that and create a simple grid. Let's scale this grid a little bit upward and subdivide this a little bit. All right. So with that done, we are jumping over to geometry node. We can do a simple mesh to point. Let's wire this in and you can see lots of points. All right, so we have uh, we have that going. Let's do the simulation thing. Let's also go ahead and drag this all the way out, switch this back to timeline, bounce this backwards. We can start off with the simple set position like we talked about earlier. So I'm just going to drag that set position. So we have the set position and we can wire this right in here. Now this is just taking a look at the position and is wondering what do you want me to do? And just like we mentioned with the transform, if we choose to set these to a certain direction, press the playback, I want you guys to notice that it starts moving that. And this is also something that's pretty interesting because at this point you can now play with the position based off setting things, okay? So we can throw in a noise texture and let's see what we can get with that. So if we throw in that noise texture right there, let's actually use the color to drive that noise texture. Bounce this backward, press the playback and you can see we are getting some rumble. But we don't want this rumble. We want to actually do something a little bit more interesting. And by the way, you can also flip this and set this to the offset, bounce this. And like we mentioned, if you set this back and forth, you'll be able to get the simulation restarted or, you know, reset the simulation. So we can bounce this back, press the playback button, and you notice this gets driven towards that direction. So what we want to do now is to set everything back to what it is. And then we can proceed to add some more stuff. So what I'm going to add here is a mix node. We already have the noise texture, which we're going to plug. And then we are going to create the scale and the position node, which we will just simply plug. Very simple setup. And we can use this to create some very interesting looking design. So with the mix node, what we're going to do is to switch this from vector all the way to color. And then from the color, we will set this to, you know, the linear light. This is very typical. So we can now connect what we have here over to this and then we can connect the position down here you know this is a mixed node okay so we can connect that and finally we connect this position to the vector and that is what we have bounce this all the way back everything looks normal all right everything looks normal but we haven't connected this so what we want is whatever we're getting from the position based off the noise alongside with the linear light mixing we want to connect that to the position that drives through the simulation. All of this is dealing with offsets, but we want to connect this to the position. So now that we have this done, we can now press the playback button and you can see what we're having. Now, for those who are wondering about selection, we already covered a video about that. So just in case you missed that, I'm gonna put a link in the description for that, a card or an end note somewhere so that you can catch up with that. So once we have this going, the next thing which you would notice is once we press the playback button, that this just simply disappears. Now, why that is happening is because all of this is set to one. We can set this to 0.1 and get something even much more smaller. So if we press the playback button, you can see that if I bounce this back, select it, set this to 0.01 and press the playback button again, you would notice that it looks a little bit interesting. So this looks pretty cool, all right? And uh, we can choose to stop it like we mentioned. So if we press the stop button, this simply stops. If we would like to cache this or say use cache, we can use the cache if we want. And what we would like to do now is to actually push this a little bit further. You know, we already have this going. We can change the points to volume, all right? So we have the points to volume. And of course, you know what we're going to do next. We're going to change the volume to mesh. Let's reduce the size. So we set this to zero point, what? 0.1, that's cool. And um, we can actually do some more stuff with this. Let's let's drag this out. I'm just going to get a subdivision surface because that looks a little bit too harsh. All right, so we can just crank this by one. Of course, this is going to take a little bit of a toll on your performance, depending on the setup that you have. So if you press the playback button, you can now start seeing stuff like that. So this is one of the cool things that you can do. 
and you can as well as just go ahead and play with all of these and get some very interesting things out of it now there's a couple of things that can crash your blender like literally crash blender for what it is especially when you're working with the geometry nodes and you want to use the simulation tool to get that going so if we add the join here and we choose to add this right here remember we mentioned that you can literally make things just travel towards a given direction by just dialing one particular thing so if we like this to rotate okay and then we want this to translate this is what happens I press the playback button and this starts creating stuff originally this looks like nothing okay but once you play this all the way to 100 it begins to get slower and slower and this can potentially crash blender it did crash for me a couple of times so that's why i can tell you that it will so depending on what you're going for this is not uh this is not the best thing to do actually if you just simply choose to make any of these changes let's say we we'll set this back to zero let's bounce this all the way back and then we set the z or the x axis to sort of rotate it creates multiple meshes because what is happening is it's taking into account the positions of these two and because they are being joined together the simulation is seeing them as one object so it's trying to rotate and translate rotate and translate and that's why you'd also notice that there is a little bit of a change as it travels all the way up and for those who are into motion graphics of course you can do some very lovely motion graphics stuff with this especially if you're just thinking about having this loop sort of animation just going back and forth it's pretty easy because all you have to do is just get the meshes that you want make one side rotate at a given time get the other side to rotate at a given time and just like that you you know they're just basically rotation so i think i'm also going to put this in the description so i might probably put this on gumroad as well just in case there's anyone who needs it or probably just want to play with it then you can have access to that as well so this is more like it blender's geometry node is getting better and with the whole write-up of the cool things coming over to the blender geometry node which were based off the workshop during the beacon 2022 lots of things will be happening and the simulation seems to be coming in strong hopefully we'll start seeing some beautiful physics things going on of course there are easier ways that you can cheat to get the physics happening within the geometry node but i think we are beginning to see some cool things the hair was one of the cool things that we saw within the year now we're getting simulation and hopefully we would see even more stuff come over to the blender geometry nodes tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until i see you guys in the next one peace